was growing up, I, I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, being raised in a very small town, and uh, the town being Aurelia, uh, which is very close to uh, Toronto here. And of course, on Saturday night, it was Foster Hewitt. If the Maple Leafs win tonight, they'll win the Stanley Cup in six games. Crowd all keyed up and anxious. The, air is still. the Leafs roll it up over the Detroit line. I hear your voice. He's right in, he shoots, he's gone! Saturday night was always hockey night. And we, we rarely ever missed it. And uh, we didn't have TV until I was 14 years old. So every, every, all of my osmosis took place by listening to hockey played over, on the radio. It was thrilling. It, it was, uh, you, could all, you could visualize the game. And Mika starts out with Sloan. A long pass. Sloan going right in on goal. <laughs> we cleared rinks and played in Lake Kuchichang. And I also had a, a, a rink in the backyard at our house that I used to tend to. We, we, we would flood the whole backyard. And th that was the rink. And my sister also figure skated, so she would practice in me figure skating out there, very little room. And I would uh, practice skating around and, and, and shooting, shooting the puck into the certain area where I had to cover a certain amount of space. And, and I got a pretty good shot going, but unfortunately, that's about as far as it went. Looking at down the ice, the blue line. Three, six, two, one, the game is over. The Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. During the time that I was uh, you know, getting into hockey, uh, the Maple Leafs won the, the Stanley Cup, I believe it was three times in, in four years. So I was extremely indoctrinated right at that point about uh, in my fandom. This is a, a, a scrapbook that I, that I collected uh, while all this was going on. It was in the early 50s. And these cards here are, God, I mean, they're from 1951, 52, 53. At, these team, at, at this time, our team, was winning. Uh, Turk Broda was the goalie, uh, and Teeter, Ted, Teeter Kennedy was the captain. Turk Broda was one of those great goalies. He was a classic uh, goalie. Here's a shot. Broda picked that one out. But Broda comes far out to make a spectacular save. You're as fine as fine. Bill Burrell was scoring a winning goal in, in the Stanley Cup final. He died that same year in an airplane accident up in northern Ontario. And it, on a fishing trip. Like the rain is falling. off to the side. He passed right out to Barocco's on the left wing. He should be scored. I, I remember the goal well. It was a winning goal in the Stanley Cup final. And, and uh, it, it, I remember how they described it, him being horizontal when he suspended in the air when he made the shot. He was about maybe two and a half feet off the ice when he made the shot, and the next day the, the, the newspaper photograph just bore that out just perfectly. Stomp and Tom has got the all-time champ of hockey songs. I was writing a song about Lake Athabasca one time, though, uh, and was, was going to get Wayne Gretzky pulled into it. And uh, it was something where Gretzky was the hero, I'm still her number one, or something like that. And uh, I went to the hockey banquet and I told Wayne that I was working on this song. He said, well, he said, I want to hear it when you finish it. And I, and I stopped. <laughs> Gretzky looking, twisting, turning, scoring! Although Wayne Gretzky is her hero, she, she still loves the, the guy, the fiancé, more. Isn't that sweet? Did you ever finish it? No. Never just became one of those the wastebasket ones, so to speak. Yeah, I said I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Gretzky out of my act. What do you remember of Harold Ballard? He was a very very nice gentleman who who got me in to do a, a very nice thing for the uh, Canadian Olympic team. I was just gonna say he looks a lot like Daryl Sidler, doesn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that uh, I'd like to be the man who introduces the man who put all this together. I'd like you to welcome, please, Mr. Gordon Lightfoot again. We're almost home. 
You could read my name, look, but they only thoughts could tell. It's like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well in a castle dark or a fortress drawn with chains upon my feet. I got an opportunity to go to quite a few games at that time, after that, uh, on his invitation. Well, that's Dave Ferry, uh, injured Leaf, Pat Graham, and the third member is not a hockey player. But a lot of the time was spent in the hot stove lounge. So a couple of times there, you know, we didn't make it back until, uh, you know, <laughs> out to the arena, and I felt really, really strange about that. But uh, we would stay uh, imbibing and enjoying ourselves and, and not being out uh, watching the game where we should be in place watching the game. Ladies and gentlemen, as part of the National Hockey League 75th anniversary celebrations, the Toronto Maple Leafs are pleased to introduce our celebrity captain, Canadian singing superstar, Mr. Gordon Lightfoot. I was invited down there to, uh, to do it. And I didn't like the idea of being, being made an, an honorary captain. The, the jersey would have been just fine. You know, but uh, it, they did, they, get, they, they gave me the sweater and I, I keep that and I treasure that. I dropped the puck for Wendell and, and Steve Eiserman. <laughs> I remember it very well. And I was so in, in awe, awestruck by the, by the whole scene that I just dropped that puck and just got the heck out of there. <laughs> Here comes Clark, has Zessel loose on the left side. Clark, is it right in? Scores! I kind of drifted away from that after Mr. Ballard passed away. And uh, I haven't actually been to a game down there for a long time, although uh, Brian Burke uh, met, met a bunch of us in Winnipeg two years ago, invited us all over to see the uh, Marlies play the Moose that night. They were playing in Winnipeg, and he was, we found him in, in the, the lobby of the hotel, and he said, come on over to the game, so. Phil Kessel takes over. He's got Tyler Bozak right up the middle. One hand, backhand shot, score! When we're on the road, we we follow the games. Sometimes we even ask an intermission. We say, how, you know, how are the Leafs doing? You know, when we're out there. When we know they're in the middle of a game and that we're in the middle of a concert, and, and we're thinking, well, they're playing hockey and we're we're out here doing a show. And uh, Barry, go and find out who's winning. Doesn't matter what they do, I will, will always be a Leaf fan. There's a strong, a very strong belief that the that they're going to come through, and it, it never leaves me for for some reason. I I, I just have this feeling. The players always want to go to the team that's that, that's going to, got a chance to win, and and boy, you can't fault a person for for that kind of a choice. Uh, unless it's a, it's a hometown kind of a, of a feel, perhaps, that we might get with Rick Nash, which is why I'm hoping he'll come and join the team. I just hope that they, that they find it that can come from inside, and I hope they stay healthy. Let's hope that their goalie doesn't go down like the very second game of the year, and, and, and let's hope they get a little bit of luck. If they're not in the playoffs this year, well, by God, they'll be in the playoffs next year. They keep the faith. See the people walking up and down. See the people moving all around. Those are the streets of my hometown on Young Street. I love being a Canadian. I love living in, in Canada. And I love going, going to visit down there because it's a privilege that, I, that I've been given for the last 40 years. And to live here and not have, have it necessary for me to go there. I'm happy here. Uh, I like to be close to the family. And I've got, I got parking for my whole band right outside the window here. There was a time in the spur line when the railroad did not run. The wild majestic mountain stood alone against the sun. That moment when the lights go out and you go on stage in front of a crowd of people who are there to see you, the band is there, the songs are there, when that when the band really starts clicking and humming and the crowd's into it and there's that give and take of energy, can you describe what that 
kind of headspace is like? Uh, it, it, it's a, a mesmerizing experience. It's just everything just gets into one, to one, one place at the, at the same time. The crowd, the show. You get the feel of the, the tunes, you hear the harmonics. It's, it's a thrilling, it's a very thrilling experience. When you first asked the question, it reminded me of how I felt every time I, I stepped on the ice, every time they put me on the ice when I was playing for, for the Bantams. And it's the same thing with stepping on stage as a, as a musician. It, it's time, the moment of truth has arrived. You know, give me the puck, let me see if I can do something with it.